Hey everybody, we want to welcome you to another episode of the New Normal TV. Got my kids with me. This is Caleb and this is Carly. Um, we just want to welcome you. We pray that this message will encourage you and bless you and that uh, it will help you get closer to God today. So take a look. I want to share the Word of God with you today from the story of Christmas. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to be in Matthew as we continue this reveal. We've been doing this for the last three weeks, but I, on this Christmas week, I want to go right to the story and hopefully uh, shed some light this morning on, on how powerful this story is. I believe it's a story that's so relevant because it's about us. You know, when you're reading the Bible, you have to make sure that you understand that the Bible is about you. This is why God gave us these stories. And I just cute, nice stories. This story is about your life. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you pay attention this morning, God's going to speak to you about exactly where you are. Yeah, yeah. I believe it with all my heart, you know. And so if you have your, your Bible, I mean Matthew, it's the first gospel in the New Testament. And this is the narration of the birth of Jesus, starting in verse 18. It says this, this is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided not to go on Facebook. <laughs> he decided not to tweet about her. He decided not to Instagram her. He decided not to swipe right. Uh, he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son. And you are to name him Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet, which we've been doing the last couple of weeks, showing you the prophecies. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give a birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. This were the words from the prophet Isaiah, who lived 700 years before Jesus was born. Verse 24, when Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. But... He did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born. And Joseph named him Jesus. Jesus is Yeshua in Hebrew, which means the Lord saves. Amen. Amen. So that's the gospel story or the Christmas story in a nutshell. And every time I, I read this story, I think about the fact that it's so old, right? It's over 2,000 years old. And it's easy over the time to just look at the story like it was a story of a galaxy far, far away. I think sometimes the Bible reads that way, doesn't it? Like a fictional story. You know, in a galaxy far, far away lived this young lady named Mary and this man named Joseph, and, then, and they had an alien named Jesus. You know, sometimes that's how I feel people read the Bible. It's, it's not really something that feels like it's relatable to us today, you know? And so one of my passions as a pastor is to really bring the Bible to life and to really show you how this stuff is real. And it's so real that it's actually your story. And in this morning, I want to bring this story a little bit closer to us. I want to put some flesh and blood into the story to show you that this story is very real. It's very raw. It's not an easy story. It's a very powerful story, but it's a very challenging story when you look at it from a human standpoint, which the Bible is a very human story with the divine plan. A lot of times we miss that because we just say, you know, the Bible is God's word, but it's God's word through mere human beings. Mary and Joseph were real people who lived in real time. Right? And so it's important that we take a closer look at the story so we can fully appreciate the, the depth of the story and how much is relatable to us today. Yeah. 
So, so you have this young couple who just got engaged, right? Now, the difference between them and us a lot of times is the fact that back in those days, they believed in prearranged marriages, which, to be honest with you, as a father of two girls, <laughs> I'm starting to consider this thing. <laughs> it may not be a bad idea. And, and, and fathers with daughters, can you help me up here? Can you say <laughs> amen? And so what would happen is you would get engaged, and then typically the, the husband-to-be would now add an addition to his father's house for her to come live. And so Joseph, in this moment, he is, he is engaged, he's excited, and he's starting to build this house for them to have a future together. Right? So, so, so let, let's, let's get closer to this. Right? Can you imagine being engaged, excited, you're building an addition to your father's house, and, 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 and the wedding is, is just, just, you know, maybe days or months away, and you get hit with this bombshell. I think sometimes we fail to, to read the story like a real human story. You imagine being engaged, and, and you're working hard, and the phone rings. Hello? Oh, hey, Mary. What's up, girl? <laughs> hey, Joe. What you doing? Uh, you know, just working on the addition. Today we're putting in the tiles in the bathroom. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm okay. I, I need to talk to you. I know you're busy, but something we need to talk about. What you want to talk about, girl? <laughs> Stop it, Joe. <laughs> girl, you must be tired. Why is that, Joe? Because you've been running through my mind all day. <laughs> Seriously, stop. I need to talk to you. I'm serious. What you want to talk about? The honeymoon? How, how, how's that, how's that um, trip advisor looking for Egypt? We're going to Egypt, right? No, Joe, seriously, I need to talk to you about something serious. Okay. Are you sitting down? I told you I'm working. I'm trying to get this tile done. Joe, I, I hate to do this over the phone, but I need to let you know something. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Joe, I'm pregnant. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Joe, you there? <laughs> what do you mean you're pregnant? I'm pregnant, Joe. I don't know how else to say this. Hello? <laughs> Barry, this is crazy. Like, what, what, do you, what do you mean? What do you, what, what, what's going on? Oh, Joe, it's, it's not what you think. What do you mean it's not what I think? <laughs> what's that mean? Well, I'm pregnant, but it's not what you think. I mean, well, how else, how, what do you, what do you, I don't, what do you mean, what do you, <laughs> well, Joe, I'm pregnant, but, pregnant by God. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> are you, are you serious, gonna hit me with that, and this is the best you got, like, <laughs> God? Are you, are you serious? Joe, I'm, 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 I'm dead serious, Joe. I would not do this to you. I'm telling you, this is for real. Barry, I, I mean, listen, I, I can't deal with this right now. Listen, I, I got to go, man. We, we got to talk about this after. What would you do? <laughs> like, seriously, though, what would you do? You are working for your future, and you get hit with this bombshell. And to make matters worse, it's God? That's the best you got? God did this? Usually, we would be blame the devil for stuff. <laughs> the devil made me do it. And she's like, no, God did this. Right? 
This is a very difficult story. Life is very difficult, isn't it? Life will have these moments that will put you in the situations that you'd never imagine to be in. And so the Bible says that he was a righteous man, which means like he was, a, he was a good guy, a man of integrity. So he decided, you know what, I'll just call it off, but I'll do it quietly, right? Because I don't want to shame her, but at the same time, I'm not going to take this on, right? And, 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 and that's a really cool thing about this man, Joseph, that he, he has integrity, Right? Because in a day and age, you know, you get hit with bombshells like that, your first reaction is to go online. <laughs> Can you believe what she did to me <laughs> after everything I have done for her? <laughs> Can you believe it? All caps. <laughs> that, 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 that. Come on. But this is a man of integrity. And the truth is, Joseph teaches us some powerful lessons here about life. Matter of fact, I believe this. Joseph is a picture of us. And that's why I like to tell you this morning that this talk, I want to name this talk, Not Your Average Joe. Because you hear a lot of messages on Christmas about the angels, and you hear about the wise men, and you hear about Mary, and rightfully so. But a lot of times, the unsung hero of the story to me is Joseph, which is typical in life, isn't it? The guys never get any credit. Isn't it true? Right? You go home, and, 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 and you, know, you, know, you put the keys in the door, and the kids are like, Mom's home! And then they look at you and say, oh, it's Dad. Mother's Day comes around, it's like, the best day in the world. Father's Day comes around, it's like, oh, it's that day. <laughs> but guys, usually you don't get the credit. But what you have to understand, this story is powerful because Joseph had to wrestle with the situation, and he had to do something about the situation, and, 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 and any average person would go a certain direction with this thing. This is what makes Joseph not your average person. And this is what I believe. He teaches us how not to live an average life. Yeah. That's the story of Joseph, my friends. Right? He is, get this, he is one decision away from living an average life. Yeah. This story could have went the other way very quickly. He could have just said, and he was thinking about that until he had a dream. Now catch this, he had a dream. He had a dream, but God had a dream too. He had a dream about how this thing was going to go down. It was going to be the typical engagement, the typical marriage, the typical life, two and a half kids, you know what I mean? A nice one, 4K, you know what I mean? Like all that stuff. Like he had a dream until God disrupted that dream and said, I have a bigger dream for you, Joseph. He is one decision away from living an average life. And I believe this Christmas, Joe is trying to scream to us from heaven, don't live an average life. And, And he teaches you how not to live an average life. First of all, he has a dream. Think about this, right? He has a dream, and God says, listen, this is really for me, Joe. You should go ahead and marry this girl because this is my dream for you. See, we have a plan, but God has a bigger plan. Right? And so the first thing that Joseph teaches us is that if we're going to live the dream that God has for our lives, we must be willing to embrace God's disruptions of our lives. Because this thing could have gone another way. Listen, he could have woken up from that dream and rationalized the whole thing. He could have just said, oh, man, I was crazy, man. I, I don't know what I ate last night, man. I had this crazy dream that this is really from God. Isn't that interesting? Where I believe this with all my heart. God speaks to all of us, but not everybody listens. Dream is just one way of God speaking. If you're paying attention, God's speaking right now. 
But what are we saying? We, we, we rationalize stuff, and we end up living an average life because we decided not to heed to God's dream for our lives. So we have a choice to make when God speaks. Do we act on it or do we just rationalize it? Because that's what's going to happen this weekend all over this nation, all over this world. People will go to church and will hear a great message and they will say, oh, that, that was really nice. And then wake up the next morning and go, oh, oh, that was just church. Oh, nice, nice, cute sermon, pastor. He's so funny, that guy. And then we go right back to our average lives. And then few of us say, wait a minute, God spoke. And he's disrupted my average life to give me an above average life. Is anybody listening? Because the scripture tells you this in Proverbs. He says, look, we can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. There's your dream, and then there's God's dream for your life. Right, and usually it comes with a disruption. Because with no disruption, we will just do life as usual. Sometimes God has to shock us into his dream. That's what he did with Joseph. Shocked him. Like, that's a shock, my friends. You're like, whoa. God will come out of nowhere. And right now in your life, if you're paying attention, there's probably a disruption going on. And what we do with disruptions is usually we either rationalize them or we complain about them. Come on. Instead of seeing it as an opportunity for us to live maybe a much better, a much above average life that God intended for us to live. Because deep down inside all of us, we know we were made to do something great and to be better and to be everything that God created us to be. The problem is... All of us hear those voices, but few of us will actually walk it out. So um, God showed me a vision that one night I got up and I told my wife, I had a vision of being in a church with over 2,000 people. And I was standing up high looking over them and everybody was worshiping. And I was like, awesome, because, you know, you have a mindset of oh, church 250 was huge to me. But God broke that and said, this is what he wants. He wants to reach everybody. So, uh, so we're looking, and then she woke up one night, and I woke up one night, and I said, we got to go to New Life. And she said the same thing. I'm like, how did God tell us to go New Life? We thought New Life was a different not New Life we're at now. So we went there, and it wasn't that. So we started looking around, and then Tori said, hey, there's a New Life in, you know, Keith's church, school. So we said, all right, we'll go try it out. And once we went in there, I was like, I don't know. I don't see 2,000 people because that my vision, you know? And my wife said, nope, this is it. I can feel it. This is right. So we kept going back. And I'm like, oh, yeah, people are uh, honest. They, they're out there. They're hungry. They, like, they love God. They love people. That's what it's supposed to be about. And they're doing their mission and reaching the lost and doing this. And then within three or four years, I see it going more and more and more. And it's like, this is it. And I know it's the church. You know what I mean? I just knew it in my heart because... Which, you got the compassion. The people had the compassion to go out and reach. And that's what you got to have. You got to have God's heartbeat and his love for people. And you'll see miracles too. Mm. You know? But, uh, you know, and then we found it and I love it. And where at now is I see miracles happening, you know, with my grandson. And, and one time I was in church and I told God, you know, sometimes we get like, uh, I don't know, like get used to it. And you know, you know, you don't the norm. And I asked God one time, hey, where's my miracle? I want to see a miracle or. Uh, uh, bless me, and, and then God immediately turned my eyes to my daughter and my grandkids in church worshiping God. I'm like, wow, that's what we that's what we thrive for, right there. Family, living for God, doing the thing, and that touching me a lot. And I never said it again. I was like, God, oh, you're right. You know, sometimes we think it's money or we think it's a new car, and it's, it's people, it's, it's souls. That's what's more important. This stuff's all gonna rot and fall apart like the stuff I do. It rots. You look at it, it looks beautiful. So we start tapping on it, and you find a big raw hole. You know, but that's that's like life. You know, you don't know who you're reaching. It may look good, but in the inside, God needs to repair them. You know what I mean? So that's my story with that. <laughs> Joe is above average because Joe didn't just hear what God said. Joe said, I'm going to embrace this disruption. I don't know what disruption is going on in your life. Sometimes a sickness is a disruption for God to intervene. 
Isn't that amazing? It's sometimes we don't like pain, but pain is our greatest revelation that there's more to life, that there's more going on that meets the eye. Isn't it amazing sometimes when we hit rock bottom that we realize who is the rock at the bottom? Disruption, my friends, is God's way of getting our attention. C.S. Lewis says it's his megaphone to arouse a deaf world because we have become dull to the reality of God and his will for us that he has to shock us into a better life. And it usually starts with some kind of pain. Because the cliche goes, no pain, no gain. Are we willing to embrace the disruption? I remember my first disruption. I was 20 years old, living an average 20-year-old life, playing sports. And like every other Cape Verdean, I thought I was going to be a professional soccer player. (laughs) Some of y'all in the room right now, that's me. I'm going to be the next Ronaldo. Dream on. That was the first disruption that I ever had in my life. And you know what? Our disruption came. I was in a camp, a a church camp, that I went for all the wrong reasons. You ever went to church for all the wrong reasons, but God is so faithful to reveal to you the right reasons for why you're there in the first place? I went for... Y'all ain't going to talk to me this morning. I went for all wrong reasons end up coming back with all the right reasons and I'll never forget the first disruption I ever had in my life I was sitting all the way in the back because usually that's what you do when you're not interested I'm not talking about you guys I'm talking about me (laughs) sitting in the back making fun of everybody until the preacher said bow your heads I didn't didn't know what he was saying all I heard all night was womp 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 Jesus But he said, bow your heads, and I'll never forget, for the first time in my life, I heard the voice of God, and he went something like this, you're living in vain. My friend, there's religion, then there's God. Then there's God, that's revelation. And and, and don't get me wrong, because here's what we say, we say, 20 year old, I'm not doing anything wrong, I'm just playing sports, having a good time. Yeah, yeah, that's average. He's saying, I didn't make you to be average. Made you to have purpose, to have meaning, to do something that's going to change the world. This was not in my plans, my friends. Because we make our plans, but the Lord charts the course of our lives. Are you willing to embrace the disruptions? Because he's always got something better in mind. See, you're looking at it as a nuisance. You're looking at it as an obstacle. God is looking at it as an opportunity. Someone broke your heart, and you're over there crying, watching Netflix and eating ice cream, and God is trying to tell you, girl, I try to, I'm saving you for something better down the line. Don't you know a pink slip could be the opportunity for you to launch that business that's been in your heart all along, for you to launch it? Embrace the disruption. It's for a better purpose. Joe teaches us how to live above average because he took it and ran with it. Was that easy? Absolutely not. But is anything worth doing easy? You know what's easy? Average. Average is easy. Religion is easy. That's why some people like to punch in, punch out. I did it. I did my religious thing. I'm talking to people who are hearing that voice deep down inside who says, man, I was created to do something with my life, to do something great, to do something powerful, to do something significant, to do something that has meaning, to do something that has a legacy. That's the people I'm talking to this morning. Which leads me to the next thing that Joe teaches us, how not to live an average life. You have to embrace the disruption. But the second thing you have to embrace is you have to embrace being misunderstood. You can't live an above the average life worried about everybody's opinion. How do I know this? Because the moment they said yes to God's disruption, you know what they said yes to as well? They said yes to the gossip of everybody. Because not everybody's going to believe you're carrying God. Try that. (laughs) They lived in a small village where everybody knew everybody. And you know how Christians gossip, right? Girl, you need to pray for Mary. You see in that belly? Hmm. 
They ain't even married yet. <laughs> Listen, this is a true story. This story is gut-wrenching because for the rest of their lives, they had to live with the stigma that they did something wrong. Think about it. Mary is a young lady. She's a virgin. But they, there was a rumor going around that Mary had Jesus illegitimately. So she has, to, she has to live with the stigma because she's actually embraced God's disruption. Now, get this for a second. You will embrace God's disruption and people will see you weird. But the most weird part is that they are the ones who have settled for an average life. This thing is backwards. Here you are actually launching into something, and you know what? Average people get afflicted when they see someone rise above average. You want to drive people crazy? Try to do something that disrupts the norm. People won't know what to do with you. They had to embrace the gossip. And guess what? That's double for Joseph because not only, man, look, you doing all this work for her, and she goes and does that to you? Do you understand the stigma that he has to live with? Because even though he had this dream, but there's a dream, and then there's the feelings and the emotions that comes with the disruption that is not necessarily going to be easy. Can you imagine for the next nine months what his life looked like? He had to determine that, listen, not only do I embrace God's disruption, I have to embrace the noise that comes with it. My friends, you want to please everybody? Go sell ice cream. Amen. The third thing and the final thing, my friends, that Joe teaches us how not to live an average life. You embrace disruption. You embrace the noise that comes with it. But also, you must embrace your role. We all have a role to play in God's story. Joseph had to come to terms with that reality. I had a plan, but God has shifted. When God shifts a plan, your role shifts. Understand this, my friends. Because think about it. God asked Joe to take a back seat. Ooh, that's hard. You know why? Because we're so egotistic. We want to be the man. Can you imagine walking around like that's it's not my kid? But can you embrace the role? We hope you enjoyed today's uh, talk. And uh, we'd like to extend an invitation for you to join us live on Sunday. Um, it's so great live. And we have something for the entire family. My kids love their classes. Uh, they love going into their classes every single week. We have 9.30 service and 11.30. Check us out online at newlifesouthcoast.com. God bless you. Have a great week. <laughs>